Cell references in Excel are relative by default, and we make them absolute when we want to copy a formula which refers to a specific cell no matter where that formula gets copied to. Absolute cell references have a dollar sign before the column name and a dollar sign before the row number. Mixed references, on the other hand, combine both concepts by making part of a cell reference absolute and part relative. Why do we do that, and how? Mixed cell references are often used when we're constructing formulas for matrix-type displays, and they save time when formulas are copied, because there's little or no need for manual editing once the references are set up properly. Here's an elementary school multiplication table. We want to multiply each number at the top by each number at the side to get the product of two numbers. We start in our first cell by typing equals the value in A4, asterisk the value in B3. We know that for each cell within the matrix, we'll be multiplying the value in the leftmost column by the value in the uppermost row corresponding to that cell. So it's always going to be column A, and it's always going to be row 3. That's useful to remember, because that always tells us where to put our dollar signs when setting up our mixed references. So it's always column A, dollar sign, and always row 3, dollar sign. We hit enter, and of course we have the product of the two numbers. Now we can confidently copy our formula to the other cells, knowing that our results will be accurate. Here's the same principle applied to the sum function. In column B, we have the standard room rates at a resort. Guests have the option of upgrading their room based on the incremental rates shown in row 5. To determine the rate after an upgrade, we'd add the value in column B to the corresponding value in row 5. All we need to figure out is where to place our dollar signs in the very first formula we create so that we can copy to the remaining cells in our data set. We start with equals, sum, open parenthesis, B6. We will always be adding values in column B, so we'll need a dollar sign before the letter B. Here's a shortcut. If you press F4 on your Windows keyboard or Command T on a Mac, right after typing your cell reference and with your cursor still flashing, the cell reference will toggle through four options in this order. Absolute, mixed, mixed, relative. So we want to see dollar sign B6. Once we've got that, we type a comma, click on cell C5, and since we'll always be adding values in row 5, we press F4 or Command T until we get C dollar sign we close parenthesis and hit enter. Now we can copy this formula to the remaining cells and do a random check for accuracy. We hit F2 to get inside this cell. We see that it's adding the standard rate to the ocean view upgrade. That's correct. Let's get another one. F2, standard rate to the ocean front. Perfect. But what if you entered formulas in a data set and later notice that your mixed references weren't set up properly. Maybe you entered this column of data and quickly realized, wait, this can't be right. 195 plus 30 does not equal 300. How do you change these all at once? We select all the cells we want to change. We hit F2 to get into edit mode. And in the formula bar, we type the dollar signs exactly where we need them. So remember, We'll always be adding values from column B, so we need a dollar sign here. We won't always be using row 6, so we remove that. We'll always be adding values in row 5. We need a dollar sign here. Once we've set up the first one correctly, we press Control and Enter simultaneously, and all the highlighted cells will copy the active cell. Now these formulas are ready to be copied to the remaining columns. Finally, we can also create what's called an expanding reference by making the first cell in a range absolute and making the last one relative, 
or vice versa. This is useful when we want to create a running balance or tally up to the most recent point, like in this cashier's reconciliation sheet. The day starts out with $100 in the till. In cell C8, we want a formula which adds that $100 in cell B6 to the amount that will be entered in B8, and for each row we'll continue to add as values are entered in B9, B10, and so on. For this we type equals sum open parenthesis dollar sign B dollar sign 6. We just made the reference to B6 absolute. We type a colon to create a range and we can just click on B8. We don't need to worry about the text that's in B7 because text values are automatically ignored in the sum function. We close parenthesis and hit enter. Notice that the reference to B8 is relative. That way, when we copy this formula to the remaining rows, it keeps expanding the range by going one down each time. With each sale, we add the total collected, which gives us a running balance up to the last invoice entered. Let's see if this works. When we enter the amount collected from invoice 1147, let's say we collected 259.50. We should see a total of 359.50 when we hit enter, and we do. Let's enter the next invoice as $500. We should now see a total of 859.50, and we do. So now you know the difference between relative, absolute, and mixed cell references, and when you should be using each. If this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up, and check out GoSkills.com for more Excel resources. Ready to learn more about Microsoft Excel? Then check out the full course on GoSkills.com. Click the link in the description.